Hello everybody. Today I am installing a propane or a dual fuel uh, kit for this Kohler 14 horsepower engine. Uh, it's a K-series engine. It's attached to an Ingersoll Rand uh, 30 gallon air compressor. I uh, bought this old compressor off of Craigslist. It was just sitting in somebody's backyard. Um, it does work. I think I did make a video about it earlier. Um, a couple of maybe a year or two ago, but uh, now I want to go ahead and put it in my truck and first I want to convert it to propane so that uh, One of the advantages of propane is that you don't have to worry about the fuel going stale I never use this hardly, but if I need to it would be nice to just use propane. So uh, there's a the propane tank there and I've got the kit it has arrived and uh, It's from Nash fuel uh, and the main part of this conversion is the demand regulator. And the demand re regulator is um, in between the tank and the carburetor, uh, which is, can be seen here. So, kind of to go into detail of how this will work, is I have the hose... Uh, regulator kit that brings down pressure from the tank the tank is almost around 250 psi which is very high of course uh, and, and you know of course on a hot day it's it's pretty high but we have to bring it down to about half a psi so that's what this is this uh, regulator here does and this regulator is uh, something that can be bought by any uh, hardware store or uh, Home Depot and basically it's just designed to take pr uh, tank pressure down to uh, half a pound of pressure So you see it has the fitting on it and I just screw that onto the tank and then our pressure is reduced then from there on the other end of this will go into the demand regulator which came in the kit that I have so that's the input so once I put that on, the next step is that uh, the, the demand regulator's job, uh, once it gets down to the low pressure, is to feed into the carburetor using the hose, which is here. This was part of the kit. And it goes, the output goes here into this hose. Let's see if I can screw it on. Well, I might not be able to screw it on on camera with one hand. But basically, this is going to go into the carburetor. Uh, I'll try to send it straight into the carburetor. I don't know if that will really work or not. I may have to use the adapter that they gave me, which is here. And this fits between the air cleaner and the carburetor. So I'm not sure if this is required or not. I'll try it with just the carburetor by itself. But the idea is that once the engine pulls a vacuum, it's going to overcome the spring and atmospheric pressure on this side and allow gas to flow into the carburetor, which then will go into the engine. So hopefully that will, uh, all this will work correctly. Um, I think it will. Like I say, the main portion is this. Um, so I'll, we'll start putting it all together. Another thing to keep in mind too is that um, because this is a demand regulator, it is true that it's not supposed to feed fuel into the engine unless the engine is running because it's depending on the engine of uh, vacuum in order to um, open up this uh, diaphragm here well the thing is is that technically you're supposed to use a positive shutoff valve for, for safety reasons just in case this malfunctions uh, and still feeds gas because that could be a fire hazard so this is a, a 12 volt shutoff valve I think it's 12 volts. Yeah, 12 volts DC shutoff valve. So technically what I could do is wire this into the back of my ignition switch. 
And like I say, it's kind of it's kind of ugly looking. I mean, it's just an old air compressor that's been sitting outside. Tank is fine. I know the tank is fine. I opened this and looked at it, but um, this is basically what it looks like. But I could wire this into my switch here and then wire this or I'm sorry, put um, the hose fitting onto my tank. Now this here is a tank. This is an actual fitting for like a forklift tank. Um, I'm using a barbecue tank because they're easy to find and easy to get refilled. So technically I could take this off and just use this portion here with my barbecue tank fitting. But this is a positive uh, lockout valve. So since I've already mounted the demand, the, the, uh, demand regulator on this here, now I'm just going to take these uh, this pipe that I put in here off and put um, some sealing tape on it so this this came with the kit uh, pipe thread sealer tape so I'm gonna go ahead and just put sealer on my um, hose here for my fitting and then tighten it back up on here so just put this uh, three quarter inch uh, to half inch adapter that didn't come with the kit I had to buy it myself usually but this is a three quarter inch input so I have to put that on so you just tighten it up Now that I've put my adapter in, I'm going to put, well, this had adapter here already, so kind of putting multiple adapters on here, but should work. I'll just tighten this up. So now I'm going to attach my hose here um, and I'm going to have to run it in a way to where it's going where this fuel line is um, and coming up behind here in the back where the old fuel line is and I'm going to try to go into here. So you zoom out it's kind of like basically what, what we're going to do here. So now it's getting a little tighter. I'm probably going to replace these clamps. It, it came with these clamps, so I'll probably just replace those. I don't really care for those clamps, but I guess it works. So this is the uh, adapter that goes uh, right behind the carburetor. Uh, so you see the airflow goes this way into the engine, or into the carburetor, into the engine. And this is the hose uh barb fitting adapter so I'm just going to screw this in and uh, mount it to the back of the carburetor like that so once we put the screws in tighten it down then the hose will go here so I tried to put it on the carburetor where the gasoline would have went in but it looks like the barb fitting on the carburetor is too small so i'm just going to go with what i would, would have otherwise had to do anyway which is put it like this so we're going to bolt it in now so this is what it looks like with the included gasket um, all three screws are in place and they're going to go right here where the air cleaner used to be so now i'm going to put this together 
I can get it to go in place. Yep, should go in. There we go. So it comes with several different size screws, but this is the size I'll probably end up using. And now, of course, this plate would need to go on here as well so that um, the air will flow through the filter, which is right here. So that's the way it's supposed to fit. So now I'm installing the adapter that they gave us to the carburetor and then putting the air plate here so it does kind of stretch it out a little bit here, but I have room for it. Uh, I used some of the longer screws they gave me, gave me to get it started. So now I'm going to take out the long screws and as you can see this is what it looks like with the long screws. So in this case the long screws are too long so I'm going to go with the other screws that it came with. Uh, since I only have two hands I'm going to have to have it held in place with just one screw. Let's see here. So now that that piece is bolted in, the last part really is just putting this hose on. So I'm just going to slide it onto the barb fitting. And then just put the clamp on here. Um, and that's basically it. Once I tighten this up, then we can test it. We will put the air cleaner on. So as you can see, it's kind of a little bit closer to the compressor. I don't know if that's going to fit like that. Okay, so I may have to take it off like that. that so still we have room here okay now that we have our bottle we'll hook up the bottle fresh bottle of propane And once we turn the gas on, we're going to basically spray for leaks. So, got the pressure here. Start spraying for leaks. Now I know that's probably going to leak a little bit because that's a lock nut. Yeah. In here as well. That shouldn't leak, yeah. But right here it might leak a little bit. So now I have the engine pointed outside a little bit. So um, if there's any exhaust or fumes or fire, it'll go up and out instead of in. Um, and so now the tank is hooked up and ready to go. So now I'm going to just prime it with the bulb on the side. And that sends propane this direction. So now I guess I get to cross my fingers and hope I don't blow myself up. <laughs> so we'll see what happens here. I'm going to crank it with the key switch. See what it does.
Well, so far it did crank up and run. And I smell it. But it's not running at full speed. So I'm not sure what it'll need to run at full speed. Uh, probably adjust this part here. Um, but so far, the first crank, it did run. I forgot I also need to disconnect my electric fuel pump because I can hear it uh, pumping. But, of course, the line is not hooked up to a fuel tank. So I'll need to do that. But uh, let's see if we can adjust some things and see if it'll run. So I just took the air cleaner off and looked down in there. Uh, the choke is indeed open. It's not closed. So that's not the problem. It seems like somehow this is stuck on the on the piece that I put here. So I can't move it. So I'll just leave it like that since we don't want to close the choke anyway. It's only for gasoline use. So now I have to continue looking for why it's not running full speed. Okay, so... The choke is definitely off, so the only thing now I'm going to do is adjust this screw right here because more than likely it's running too rich, so I'm going to turn the screw in and lean it out a little bit. Hopefully it'll start running better once I lean it out, so we'll see what happens. Turn the gas on first and prime it. Well, it does work, and it smells great too. I mean, it doesn't smell bad or anything. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it was just uh, leaning it out. I could tell the governor was starting to push back a little bit, like it was gonna try to keep it from going too fast. So that's when I knew it was pretty much where it needed to be. So yeah, that that was a pretty easy kit to put on um, from Nash Fuel. Um, I'm just going to double check for leaks again, but, and I may go ahead and put the lock off valve in just because, um, my guess is that as long as the engine is still spinning, there is a chance that it could continue to flow fuel through the engine and I don't want it to, uh, combust in the hot exhaust. So, um, I'm probably going to put in the lock off valve just for safety purposes. But yeah, as you can see, it runs well. It actually cranks up and runs. And so, um, yeah, I'm very happy with it. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like it.